If there is one drug we overuse in empiric therapy in hospital wards and emergency departments, it's vancomycin. There are others and we'll get to those too, but vancomycin really stands out because it has a very specific purpose. To cover MRSA and not much else. Which begs the question, why are we so worried about MRSA? Is our fear justified and how can we know? Does the risk of MRSA justify all the adverse effects of vancomycin, especially nephrotoxicity? So let's break it down. In the old days, MRSA was almost exclusively a hospital-acquired bacterium, meaning you would only worry about it if your patient was recently hospitalized, had an invasive procedure like surgery or central line placement, or was on hemodialysis and therefore exposed to healthcare on a regular basis. Naturally, patients who recently had a MRSA infection or were colonized by MRSA recently are also at risk, okay? And, since MRSA is resistant to many antibiotics, patients who recently received broad-spectrum antibiotics are at risk too. These antibiotics wipe out the normal microbiome, leaving space for resistant bacteria like MRSA to multiply and take over the niche. These are your classical MRSA risk factors, and they still apply today. If my patient has one or more of these risk factors and has a severe infection like sepsis and especially septic shock, I will definitely make sure that MRSA is covered and yes, I will probably use vancomycin. However, in the early 2000s, a new type of MRSA emerged. Suddenly, more and more people with no prior healthcare exposure started presenting with serious MRSA infections. This MRSA appeared in the community, outside of hospitals, and became known as, of course, community-acquired MRSA. It behaves differently from classical hospital-acquired MRSA that we are all so used to. It's prone to cause severe skin infections and necrotizing pneumonia, even in healthy and young adults and teenagers. Now, in terms of risk factors for community-acquired MRSA, basically anyone who has frequent direct physical contact with other people's skin is at risk of becoming colonized or infected with community-acquired MRSA. So, people in crowded conditions like prison inmates, uh, students in dorms, IV drug users, athletes in contact sports like wrestling, football or jiu-jitsu, and even kids in kindergarten, which means that almost anyone could potentially be colonized with this bacterium. And this is when our vancomycin craze really took off. If everyone might have MRSA, and they have a serious infection and we are not certain what is the source, you might think, better safe than sorry, just add vancomycin. But here's the thing. While community-acquired MRSA is widespread in North America, especially in the United States, it is still very rare in most of Europe. But European doctors, myself included, read US literature, US guidelines, US websites, and many are not aware of this crucial epidemiological difference. Again, in most of Europe, community-acquired MRSA is still very rare, except in a few localized hotspots. So, what does this mean for us in practice? In medicine, we always choose the lesser evil. So, on one hand, vancomycin is nephrotoxic. On the other, failing to cover a true MRSA infection can be fatal. So, whether to empirically start vancomycin boils down to the three questions that I'm about to present. Number one, what kind of infection are you dealing with? Number two, how severe is it? In other words, is your patient septic or even in septic shock? And three, are there risk factors for MRSA and what are they? Let's take a look at question number one. If your patient has a urinary tract infection, no matter how severe, it's almost certainly not MRSA. Cholangitis, diverticulitis, something in the abdomen, again, not MRSA. That is not what Staphylococcus aureus, including MRSA, typically does. MRSA typically causes severe skin and soft tissue infections, especially with purulent discharge, necrotizing pneumonia, especially after influenza, and sometimes sepsis without a clear source of infection. It does not cause pyelonephritis or cholecystitis, so the diagnosis matters. Now, question number two, the severity of illness. If my patient is in septic shock, it's perfectly reasonable to include vancomycin even at the slightest suspicion of MRSA. Because when the source is unclear and the patient is crashing, you will go broad. You shoot first and ask questions later, because missing the pathogen could be deadly, right? But if the patient is not in shock, I will only add vancomycin if 
the diagnosis fits Staphylococcus aureus, and there are clear MRSA risk factors. In Europe, this would be your classical hospital-acquired MRSA risk factors, like recent or frequent healthcare exposure, invalid catheters, known colonization or infection with MRSA sometime within the last 6 to 12 months, right? Or very high MRSA prevalence in your ward. But I will not start vancomycin just because my patient plays football on occasion. This is not a risk factor in Europe. Please remember this. By the way, I cover all of this in detail, both community-acquired and hospital-acquired infections in my course Antibiotics in Clinical Practice. If you use antibiotics regularly, but you don't have time for months of study, this course is for you. It's built to help clinicians make confident, rational decisions, even in unclear and complex cases. Take a look at the demo and access the first few key lessons. You will quickly understand why this approach works and why you will actually remember it when it matters. Now, let's say for the sake of the argument that you do start vancomycin empirically out of caution. If you do that, please leave yourself the option to stop it later. That means take two sets of blood cultures before starting antibiotics. If there is pneumonia, try to get the respiratory sample as well. That way, in 3 to 4 days, if cultures come back negative for MRSA or show another pathogen, you can safely de-escalate vancomycin before it harms your patient's kidneys. This is crucial and yet so often missed. If you don't collect microbiological samples in time, you won't know what you are treating afterwards and you won't be able to de-escalate. So you will end up continuing vancomycin for who knows how many days at the expense of your patient's kidneys, of course. One more tip. If you are worried about MRSA pneumonia and your hospital has this test, do a nasal PCR swab for MRSA. Swab the nares. Studies have shown that the negative predictive value of this test is excellent. If it comes back negative, there is a more than 98% chance that this isn't MRSA pneumonia. Again, I explain all of this in my course and it becomes much easier once you understand the fundamentals of antibiotics really well. In summary, Vancomycin is still our go-to drug for severe MRSA infections, but whether to include it empirically depends on the diagnosis, the severity of illness, and the risk factors for MRSA. And even when you use it, take microbiological samples so we can safely stop it if it turns out MRSA wasn't the culprit. Please share this video with colleagues or students, anyone who might benefit, because this is knowledge worth sharing. Take care.